Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington, and today I'm talking with Debbie Sipowicz, a dynamic businesswoman with a multifaceted background. Her first tech company grew to over 65 employees in six years, and she spent eight years homeschooling her children. Today, she partners with entrepreneurial women to help them succeed in business and life. Debbie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Crystal. I love the work you do, so I feel <laughs> it's like an honor and a pleasure to be here. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. So I want to reflect a little bit on your accomplishments. You have done a ton, and I want to know what stands out most to you as your most your biggest contribution or something that you feel is your your most important accomplishment thus far hmm well i would say it, it, it's interesting because i've had these two paths i mean i had the like you were saying started a business when i was 26 yeah. with three uh, with two other people um and really built that business up doing everything from picking out paint colors to writing software to demoing products and everything in between so it's it was an incredible learning experience on so many levels. Mm -hmm. um, and I also had this other path where I um, homeschooled my kids, which was in some ways very similar because you're making it up as you go along because you're ha you have to be comfortable in that space of yeah. I don't really, I'm not really ready or I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it anyway. But I will say, without a doubt, that experience of homeschooling my kids, I, I feel like I learned more about myself and about um, leading than I did all those years starting the software company. Ah, nice. Yeah. So that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you, too, is how did, what did homeschooling your children teach you about leadership? Um, well, I, I like to say, like, it's in, like the first company, this company that I started, and that was the first company because I also had a, a second one, but we were, it was really focused on the end result. Like we mm -hmm. wanted success, we wanted to um, be you know, financial success, we wanted all the perks that come with being successful, and we mm -hmm. got we got there. Um, so it's interesting because to me, this homeschooling experience was like, um, I, I was 100% focused on my kids. Like I wanted more than anything for them to be successful. And, th and it was sort of like that mindset shift from, um, you know, doing something for the external rewards versus right. doing something because I so loved these boys and would do anything in the world to help them be successful. And I think of that difference as like the the difference between um, masculine energy and feminine energy, in a, and you, you need both in a business. Right. You, need, you need both. But I loved that idea of just really f finding what it was like to serve someone from uh, my whole heart. Beautiful. Yeah. That's kind of like, I've heard of the concept of servant leadership. Yeah. So it's kind of like you learn, t you learn to become that servant leader through leading exactly. your children. Exactly. Exactly, because there's nothing else that there's there was nothing else that mattered, and in the course of serving somebody so mm -hmm. intently, you do become successful, yeah. which is interesting, I think, because yeah. because so many people do it from the other way around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Now I want to know some of your biggest aha moments. Talk about something that was transformational in your life. Um, a story about a time when you learned something so big, you just had to share it with everyone. Hmm, I think, um, you know, it's, it's funny because now I do so much with, I work with a lot of women in, um, I just wanna say authentic leadership for lack of a better description, yeah. because it's really like being, your, being okay, being yourself in front of other people. Um, and the story that comes to mind for me around that is, I, when I was homeschooling my kids, and I, that's what I was doing, I was um, full on homeschooling my kids, but when I was fade, phasing it out, I was um, in this position where I started, I was starting to be a health coach, and I was working with clients one-on-one, -on -one and I wasn't really my thing, mm -hmm. and I, uh, this, I had this opportunity to go to this workshop for a weekend where you could, um, it was, for th this workshop was all about women and their opinions. They wanted to get 
um, a, w more women stating their opinions in like the Wall Street Journal and the oh. New York Times and those kind of things. So this workshop was all about that. And I thought, oh, well, this is my great opportunity, right? Because I, I, don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily read those papers, but I, w I definitely am a person with a lot of opinions. Uh -huh. and, and I, I went to this <laughs> workshop and thinking it's a writing workshop, right? And the very first thing they said was, okay, we're gonna have everybody, it was a kind of a U-shaped table. I was the last sort of near the door. And they said, we're gonna start over here we're going to have everybody stand up one by one. And this is your assignment. You, you, can, you, you need to say this. Hi, my name is, you know, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. I'm an expert at fill in the blank because fill in the blank. Oh. And I'm, I'm at, so, and I'm a homeschool mom, right? And this is a, this is a group of really um, high political people and they were, um, and of course, the first thing that goes through your mind is your resume or your credentials and all right. those things. But this first person got up and said, you know, she was um, an expert on China relations because she's working at the U at the uh, in Washington for the last ten years, and she that's her job. Sounds reasonable. Uh, sounds reasonable, Perfect right? Answer. But I'm just like shrinking every time. The next person was like, I'm an expert at. Um, I don't know what it was, like the Bosnia War because I was a frontline journalist for 10 years. And, wow. and all these things that were really, really powerful. Massive. Yeah, and I'm, I'm like <laughs> shrinking every time. But <laughs> those, are big, those are big jobs. <laughs> yes. But eventually, anyway, when it was my turn, I just felt like I, I had no choice but to surrender because I didn't have those big credentials. Yeah. I was just starting my health coaching business. And so I stood up and I said, my name is Debbie Sipowitz. I'm an expert at the way food affects your body because 10 years ago I was diagnosed with cancer and I used food as a way to heal my body. Oh, that's powerful. It was so powerful. But the thing that was so powerful about that, well, I forgot to tell you that everybody had to vote at the end whether they thought oh. you were. <laughs> but, but, they, but they voted. and. What I really learned that day was that it wasn't really about the resume. It really wasn't about um, my credentials. It was about, was I willing to stand up there and, and, and with my experience mm -hmm. and help somebody just from that and just from that alone. And it was, it was a, huge, a huge aha for me mm -hmm. in that moment because then I started speaking. Um, I started doing more speaking on food and health and really felt like I, had an obligation to do it mm -hmm. because so many people could benefit just from my story. Yeah, you had a yeah. deeper mission behind it. Exactly. And that's really, really important. Yeah. That's a big aha moment. It was a big aha. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of my, it's actually one of my favorite topics is talking about the expert. And I actually had a conversation with someone recently about this. We were putting her on TV. I, I work in PR. Yeah. And she, really was struggling uh, with calling herself an expert. Exactly. She was uncomfortable with that concept. So mm -hmm. we went through different expert titles. What if we call you this? I don't know if that feels good. And it was all, I don't know exactly what was going on inside of her, mm -hmm. but it was really interesting to watch her go through that and feeling that, you know, I guess she kind of perceives being an expert as being bigger than who she is. Yes. And it made her feel inauthentic to call herself that. For, oh, a hundred percent. And I see yeah. that in my classes all the time because I do these speaking classes, which is all, that are all about learning to get comfortable. It, mm -hmm. And one of the questions I ask somewhere down the road, the road in this class is, okay, what are you an expert in? Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because there are classes for women. How um, the reaction is? Well, you know, I'm. I guess I'm an expert at yada yada, but then if I change the question to well, what are you really good at, then everybody can answer the question. Yes. And I don't know why I find that so fascinating. It's like that making that leap from, you know, I'm good at this to I'm the expert. There's something about that that's really scary. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when I was looking you up, I learned that we have something in common. The nice. two of us are both introverts. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> very much so. Yeah. And you have some conversation on your about page about, um, you know, kind of your journey to realizing that you didn't have to play these roles, mm -hmm. both the masculine role and then pretending to be an extrovert. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? That's a big lesson for people who, like myself, 
are, um, I've, I've overcome it, but you know, sometimes having the issue of feeling like you're not enough because you're an introvert and because you're not as cool as the extroverts look. Yes. Well, it's interesting if you, if you were ever on any of those stock photos, there's a stock photo of in, an introvert and stock photo of an extrovert just with words. Oh. And somebody did an analysis one time of, because the extrovert words are charismatic, outgoing, <laughs> you know, the introvert words are just, are really, you know, quiet, shy, yes. like <laughs> it, it, it's really, <laughs> it's, it's really unfair because <laughs> there's so many of us that are, um, introverts and I'm so yeah I I will definitely speak to that because I think the whole first part of my life I I felt like I was in this not consciously but in kind of an endless cycle of proving like just proving like being on this hamster wheel to prove that I was good enough that I had value that I was could be successful and I and I think uh, through all these experiences with um, homeschooling for sure for with this experience that I went through with my um, health crisis i just i really so am learning that it's all about um just being okay being yourself and like but not even that it's like being brave enough to be yourself because mm -hmm. you feel like there's always there are always people who are further ahead there are always people who are further behind they're always and if you're like constantly in the mode of comparing yourself to somebody else you 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 don't ever get that satisfaction of just standing there and this is me and i'm i know i'm not perfect and that's just got to be okay yeah. yeah but um it's a it's a big challenge for a lot of people to get um because we don't have role models or we don't have a lot of role models or that are willing to say Right. I'm <laughs> Crystal Covington and I'm an introvert. There are yeah. very few. There are very <laughs> few. I can't think of a single book other than Quiet. Yeah. And everybody, when I yeah. say I'm an introvert, they go, oh, have you read Quiet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to write another book. There needs to be more than that. <laughs> but yes, having more people, I, I feel like, you know, part of my, as you sometimes talk about the fact that you feel it's your responsibility to mm -hmm. share the f health facts that you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's my responsibility to talk about being an introvert publicly so that people know, oh, she looks really cool, but she's an introvert too. Yeah. To try to get rid of some of that stereotype. I have people tell me, um, I say, oh, I'm an introvert. They say, oh, don't, don't say that about yourself. Like oh, <laughs> really? That's super <laughs> yeah. interesting, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you have it on your about page, which I thought was really sweet. Yes, because I think it's really important to to, um, I, I guess I just, I, f I feel like it's really important to stand up anyway. Like I really, my big mission in life or on in this lifetime, I would say is to have more women take a seat at the table. And yeah. it's it's interesting because I've, because I was an engineer as an undergrad and I've, I've spent so much of my time surrounded by men mm -hmm. in that endless cycle of proving. And when I was homeschooling, it was the first time in my life that I was, the my peers were women and these women i'm telling you they were raising kids running a fam you know running a household educating their kids they were so incredibly talented and so incredibly powerful and they and yet i would say that they didn't view themselves that way yeah. and it was fascinating to me because i thought if if these women who are friggin' heroes, in my view, aren't <laughs> willing to view themselves that way, then why should the rest of the world? And I, I just really wanted to change that dynamic so that no matter who you were or what you right. were doing, you still had, you could til still take a seat at the table, metaphorically speaking. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, one of the things that you talk about is a new kind of leader. Yeah. What do you mean by that, and why is that important for us to think about and consider? Well, um, it's interesting because the, I don't know if you saw the Forbes just came out with their 100 women, 100, what do they call it, their 100 most successful women or women to watch or something like mm -hmm. that. And they, their criteria, and so the 100 lists of really powerful women, political leaders, world leaders, CEOs. Yeah. And I can't help but think there are so many um, women who have influence, who have power, who aren't that, but they're, you know, and the, it's like that, does the person who supports 
the the man of power like this is an interesting fact that I was I think there's so many women starting businesses now and in the yeah. in the old in the um, previous discussion uh, you see a man that was really successful there's an expression that goes behind every successful man is a successful woman I don't know what that expression it's is but it's something like that powerful is a powerful, woman. A powerful woman right but but the reverse is not happening so we, these women are starting businesses but not that I'm advocating it, but the men necessar aren't necessarily staying home and supporting them in that same way. Mm -hmm. And that's just a real big cultural difference. And so what I want, I want the women to be recognized and valued. And even if they're not going to be the CEOs, be, even if they're going to play a supporting role, because look at Michelle Obama, like she's the queen of Yes. the supporting role she is like the she is such a great role model for yes, that absolutely she'll she doesn't want to be president but that doesn't lessen her uh, impact in the world yeah. yeah it's funny I don't want to sound cliche for mentioning Sheryl Sandberg but I literally just this morning yeah. watched her TED talk yeah I've been watching TED talks a lot lately and that's one of the things that she brought up is the fact that um, women will often, well, they'll leave the workforce and they'll go and, you know, stay home with the kids, but it's not really viewed okay to do it the other way around. That yeah. doesn't happen very often. And I've actually had that conversation with my husband as well, is that it's res it's respectable, you know, for a man to do that. And when we do meet people yeah. who, men who are mm -hmm. playing a different role, we pretty much, it's kind of the culture in our relationship to, to uh, give appreciation to them and make sure that those men feel like this is a great role. It's okay that you're in this role and make sure they feel appreciated yes. because um, we don't do the reverse very often. And we also don't, like you said, appreciate the women behind the men mm -hmm. um, as much as we should. Yeah, I, I just think at the end of the day, everybody wants to be successful, recognized, value, or just yeah. and, um, and I think we all can, no matter what role we want to play so that you don't have to chase the CEO position yeah. or the be in that endless cycle of proving. You can just be yourself and still get there. So basically a new kind of leader is just accepting the role that you play, appreciating yourself for your contribution and being yourself authentically. Yes, because I, I think a lot of people think that it's all about um, self-confidence standing mm -hmm. up or taking the leadership position and i i really would claim that it's all about self-appreciation it's self-acceptance it's it's being okay with your flaws in front of people not just being okay with your flaws when you're sitting home with your <laughs> journal mm -hmm. writing but um just being out there and and uh and i think that's i do think that's a new kind of leader nice yeah and funny thing you're a twin I'm a twin, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've always been curious. Yeah. Just a question. Are you and your twin anything alike as far as your career choices and your life paths? Have you gone the same direction or are you doing totally different things today? I, we, we're definitely parallel. I mean, she's yeah. doing, she's an artist, so she's very much on the creative side I and started that way. I feel like I'm very much on the, you know, business slash more powerful side and uh -huh. that's why this creatively empowered which is the name of my business it's like this merging it's like the bridge in between those two worlds because I I know a lot of people from her who have a really strong huge talent a lot of creative like those softer skills um, that just want to be more powerful I know a lot of women on this sort of power side who just really want this softer Creativity. skills and, and yes. yes and like that middle place what a beautiful spot to be in um, so yes and no but I um, for sure we've had parallel lives the whole way and it's great having a twin I highly recommend it <laughs> <laughs> well thank you I'll try it someday <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any tips that you just want to make sure our audience receives from this interview hmm tips or biggest biggest lessons that you want to make sure we share I guess I I it's it just still comes back to to being yourself so I I my biggest tip would be to look at those places in your life where you um, cringe at some level like 
and it's usually because of what, and just notice, I guess, it's because it's usually a, that you're worried about what somebody else is thinking of you. And I just think if you can work on that, just letting that go, because knowing that no matter what you do, when you stand out in front of someone, I mean, a group, there will always be people who don't like you. And there, there will always be people who do. And like just accepting that, you, you can just go so, you can boost yourself um, up really quickly because you get like it, the whole, I think the whole trick to life is not caring what other people think and just yeah. being okay with yourself. Hmm. Yeah, that's a beautiful lesson. You're not responsible for how other people feel yes, about you. Yes, <laughs> so true, so true. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for that yeah. lesson. And you know, thank you for spending time with me, Crystal Covington, and my guest, Debbie Sipowitz. Always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. Thanks for watching. Thank you.